just discovered us for today. Welcome po at sana po marami po kayong matutunan sa ating webinar for this week. In the captivating world of medical science where innovation is the guiding star, the Philippines shines brightly in the realm of eye banking and cornea transplantation. We invite everyone to uncover the latest advancements, surgical techniques and post-operative care protocols, revolutionizing cornea transplantation, enabling us to provide a glimmer of hope, especially for those who have impaired vision. We hope to be able to... Uh, especially yung ating mga healthcare administrators no, who steer their ships in the healthcare sea, find valuable insights on how to optimize eye banking operations. Very, very important. Matututunan po natin for today. Uh, that's within their own hospitals and institutions. It will be from logistics to donor recruitment strategies. Lahat-lahat po iyan ay pag-uusapan po natin sa webinar for today and offering a unique perspective on the impact of eye banking and cornea transplantation for today. I'm Dr. Raymond Francis Sarmiento, Director of National Health Center, National Institutes of Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. Always a pleasure to be with all of you during our regular Friday dates. Today, very, very special because my co-host will be none other than the special assistant to the Dean for External and International Linkages at the UP College of Medicine and also active consultant at the Philippine General Hospital, Dr. Angela Sison Aguilar. Mamangge. Welcome po again. Hi, thanks, Doc Raymond. Sana ako yung lucky charm rather than the James <laughs> Kett. I love the technical difficulty, but good afternoon. Good afternoon, Doc Raymond. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to all our all of our participants here in the Blockbuster Always live broadcast of the Zoom webinar. And to all of you who are watch, watching live, live streaming through the TV UP YouTube channel, as well as on the UP system Facebook page, the TVUP Facebook page, and the Stop COVID Deaths Facebook page. So very viral po ang ating mga events. And of course, all of those who are watching from the UP, TVUP Signal Channel 101. So we have panelists uh, today. Raymond, can you yes, guide us who the panelists are? So our, our panelists, uh, especially for today, as we talk about the transformative power of eye banking and cornea transplantation in the Philippines, we bring you no one but the best po. Our main speaker is the founding president and chair and current ambassador at large of the eye bank Foundation of the Philippines. She also serves as the head of the Association of Eye Banks in Asia and is active consultant and head of the Ocular Tissue Transplant Service at St. Luke's Medical Center, Dr. Mingita Padilla. And our reactor for today serves as the chair of the Department of Ophthalmology at Angeles Medical Center, Angeles City, Pampanga, as well as a cornea and external disease consultant at the Paulino J. Garcia Memorial Research and Medical Center. Uh, I am very careful because baka may makalimutan po ang word. In Kabanatuan, Nevaisiha, Dr. Payus Acampo. The synthesis and closing... Wow, remarks. that's very great. <laughs> the synthesis and closing remarks Paul, will be delivered yeah. in another by so, the head of the Office of Expanded Education and Training at PGH, Dr. Stella Marie Jose. Mamangge? Yeah, okay. So you've seen that in our opening billboard that we will still maintain the title Stop COVID Deaths, but we will expand our discussions to current COVID problems of the CO, other outbreaks, V-viruses, eye infections, T disasters, so hence, our stop COVID deaths have already transformed. It levels up to take a closer look at the other emerging health problems here in the community. Now we are in the eye problems. And while we keep an eye out, take note for COVID-19 developments here in the Philippines and the rest of the world, we are bringing you other topics as well. And since we know that you will like to be current with the latest news in health and medicine, here and abroad, we have a new segment in the webinar called Web Updates. So these are some of the stories that we are keeping an eye on and why they are relevant to you. We're still having technical difficulties, too, so we apologize. But I'll start off with the very, very first news update po natin. So I have one news update. Si Mamangge naman will also have one news update. For our news update for today, I will be talking about PhilHealth. So ano po bang alam, uh, alam po natin sa mga uh, kailangan pong bayaran ng PhilHealth? According to the Philippine uh I saw the Private Hospitals Association of the Philippines pala, or PHAPI. PhilHealth has yet to pay claims with private hospitals worth more than 10 billion pesos. And the said amount is based on the 
estimate of be happy from three to four months ago. So medyo dumami na po ito dahil three or four months ago, one quarter ago pa po ito. Uh, and ang pinangahawakan po nila, so reports said that PhilHealth now owes hospitals in the countries around approximately 27 billion pesos, but promises to settle them in the next 90 days. And this is what current uh, P PCEO or President and Chief Executive Officer Emmanuel Ledesma of PhilHealth uh, told the House Appropriations Committee that they will be rolling out soon the debit credit payment mechanism for that purpose. And the agency's more than 400 billion pesos in investable funds and over 68 billion pesos in net income is proof of its liquidity. So it liquid pa po ang PhilHealth and is able to meet its financial obligations. Kaya po nabanggit na pwede po nilang there's this possibility that they'd be able to settle all of their uh, payables within within the next 90 days. Uh, so very, very high percentage daw po according to PCEO of PhilHealth, uh, attorney, I think it's attorney Emmanuel Ledesma. Uh, Mamangge, what's your news story for today? Um, mayroon na kalagay na WHO, WIPO, WTO, renew commitment to support integrated solutions to global health challenges. So, very, look at this, graphic, very, very uh, ambitious and while acknowledging that uh, there are issues with regards to this integrated health solutions, they are trying to increase and broaden the support for more effective and sustainable use of these trips or integrated solutions to access health technologies. Nako, sa iyo to, Raymond, health technologies, <laughs> di ba? Parang telehealth. Mm. To be better prepared for future pandemics. And right now, hindi lang pandemics na nakikita natin. We have seen crises upon crises, especially working toward, uh, especially with disasters. So, for example, uh, the people here that you can see in the uh, in the graphic is that they're People who are Tedros Adhanom uh, Gebrezus, the Director General of WSO, uh, W WIPO Director Darentang, and W Director Dr. Ngozi Iweela, they recognize the challenges to uh, of this program to be fully implemented in domestic level so that the access to health technologies are available. Of course, COVID was one such issue. Now they're talking about communications, warning, disasters, multiple crises caused by climate change, environmental degradation, and human losses. And the issue there is that we have to have trilateral cooperation to be able to make sure all of the um, stakeholders that will be able to translate this from policy to utilization. So very ambitious though, and hopefully there's a timetable and they will be able to carry this out and then coming to medical technologies and innovation. So inaabangan po natin yan. So go ahead, Raymond. Thank you. And those are the news that we're keeping an eye out on. Please keep uh, please keep watching us and keep an eye out for our news for the news update for next week. Okay, so uh, we'll ano po, no? uh, tuloy tuloy lang po tayo with our uh, program for today. Uh, and we'll, we'll be discussing po our topic very, very shortly eye banking and corneal transplantation. I'm not sure if we're able to play the POTS video. We'll, we'll take a stab at it po. And POTS po is uh -huh. what we do in terms of. Um, uh, trying to set our discussion into context kung ano po yung alam ng ating mga uh, viewers especially those who are uh, who will be interviewed as part of the POTS video with regards to yeah. the topic so the questions that we ask alam nyo bang pwede kayo mag-donate ng mata kung mamatay ka ba ikaw ba ay willing na mag-donate ng inyong mata bakit o bakit hindi may mga concerns ka ba kung mag-donate ka ng inyong mata kapag ikaw ay pumano or namatay so, uh, All right. Oo. Sayang. Inaabangan ko yan lagi, Raymond. Ha? Actually, it's the man on the street interview or the person on the yes, street. Po. Yes, Oo. Oh, oh, oh. Kaso nga lang, mayroon po tayong concerns. Mayroon tayong isiskip na lang natin. Yes, po. So, yes, na, po. Na, na sabi mo na rin na 
lahat ng tao kailang malaman kung anong magagawa natin. Just in case pumanaw tayo ng di oras, uh, makakadonate ba tayo ng any body part in this time, cornea. And that is what we're going to talk about today. So, salamat. Uh, and uh, for those of you asking, Raymond, Spanish Certificates of Attendance. Okay, thank you so much, Mamangge. So, for those who are asking, uh, Certificates of Attendance uh, will be provided to those who have attended at least 50% of the webinar duration. Those who have been asking us, we have already sent out po our um, Certificates of Attendance for webinars 1 to 162 and after today, hopefully, we'll be able to send out for, for 163. Uh, for those who are asking, kasama na po dito si webinar, I think webinar 150, yung may kinilaman po sa climate change. Uh, so if you feel you should have received um, a certificate of attendance but did not, uh, please let us know but e uh, by emailing at stopcoviddeaths at up.edu.ph. Uh, but before we proceed to our webinar proper, meron po kasi tayong fun quiz segment uh, na meron din po tayong short video. I'm not sure if we're able to uh, to try that out also. Uh, sige, no problem. Uh, so we, we're having, uh, we're receiving instructions from our production team with regards to that. Can we have at least the fun quiz in Zoom po at in, in Slido on the screen right now? Thank you. Oo nga. So mamaya kasi may standard panel discussion format. Ayan, pumasok yes, ang fun quiz. Go, Raymond. Yes, well, can we have also the slide on in dito po sa Zoom para dun sa... Thank you so much. Ayan. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, <clears throat> so number one, uh, first question po natin. Uh, but for those who are joining us... For the first uh, time. Outside of the Zoom, if you're seeing this, you should be able to see ito pong sa slido.com. So you can still participate in our fun quiz by opening up your browser, typing in slido.com, and entering the code 6510096. That's 6510096 for you to be able to participate in our fun quiz segment. So first question po natin, a patient with cancer, diabetes, or other conditions that are contraindicated for whole organ donation can still be able to donate their cornea. Is it true or is it false? Yan po ang napaka mahalaga po natin na katanungan. Is it true or is it false natin? Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity to greet those who are like I will, to greet those who are joining us locally. Uh, so maraming maraming salamat po sa mga nanonood from the Orani District Hospital in Bataan. DSWD Haven for the Elderly in Tanay Rizal, the Department of Health, Center for Health Development Western Visayas in Iloilo, from Cebu Provincial Hospital in Karkar City in Cebu, Sok Sargen General Hospital in Surala, South Cotabato, Camp Navarro General Hospital in Zamboanga City in Zamboanga del Sur. Also those who are joining us all the way from Bataan, from Los Baños, from the Philippine General Hospital, from University of Rizal System Health Services, from uh, Rodriguez Rizal, from Cavite, from RPHS, Annex 1, uh, Antipolo City, Dr. Menzi Ramos, maraming maraming salamat po. Those who are joining us also, all the way from, let's say, uh, from Bulacan, maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, from, Maril from Deca Homes, Marilao, Bulacan, thank you so much. Uh, those joining us from Malayo po ito, M, I think it's Mariano Marcos Memorial Hospital and Medical Center in Ilocos Norte. Uh, so thank you, thank you po sa lahat. For our question number two, question number two reads, the most important factor in a successful eye banking program to encourage people to donate is ano po ang tamang kasagutan. There are four items po na nakalista po dito. So we'd like to greet those who are joining us internationally. From the Chonin Hospital in Taipei City in Taiwan, from Oman College of Health Science in Oman, from <clears throat> from Los Angeles, California in the United States, the University of Ha'il in Ha'il, Saudi Arabia, University of the Philippines Nursing Alumni Association International Incorporated in Edison, New Jersey, USA, and uh, those uh, joining us na marami po na ating mga OFWs all around the world. So we'll not be closing this 
uh, fun quiz po natin as we move on to our webinar proper and our main speaker will be introduced by Dr. Aguilar. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Raymond. Sana nakasagot kayo sa quiz. Hmm. So I'm now, uh, I have the pleasure and honor of introducing our presenter of the topic for today. Uh, he's the, she is the founding president and chair and the current ambassador at large, iBank Foundation of the Philippines. She is the head of the Association of iBanks in Asia, as well as an active consultant and head of the Ocular Tissue Transplant Service of the St. Luke's Medical Center. So we'd like to give the floor now to Dr. Mingita Padilla. Ma'am, please. Hello, uh, good afternoon. No? And thank you very much for inviting me here. Now, uh, without further ado, I'm going to share my slides. I, I heard about Mariano Marcos. We just opened some retrieval, a retrieval center there, and they've had two donors na yata. So since we opened, no? so let me just mm. share my slides. Huh? So Go ahead, Mama. Screen share. Okay, na ba? Can you yes, see? Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Go ahead, pa. Go ahead, pa. So, Good, uh, ma thank you for inviting me and giving me this chance to share about iBanking. No? And yes, it stopped COVID deaths, but COVID has had a very great impact on iBanking around the world. A negative impact, as you can imagine. But let's get started. No? Well, it is a non-profit organization. I have no financial disclosures relevant to this talk. So, why did we put up an iBank? Why an iBank? Well, it was in response, it was born out of a desperate need to provide transplantable corneal tissue for those who needed them, no? for the corneally blind. Um, first of all, what is a cornea for those who are not familiar? The cornea is the frontmost layer of the eye, crystalline, which must be clear and normal in shape to be able to refract light properly so that good vision is possible. This is the close-up of the eye, one of the eyes of my husband, his hazel eyes. No? It's a perfect looking eye. And this is the cornea. Not everyone is this lucky. And what happens to some people who needs corneal transplants in the Philippines? Now, for those who are a little queasy, I'm sorry about these slides, no? but these are infections of the eye. The most common reason people need transplants in the country are infections, trauma, and complications following cataract surgery. These are common, can happen to anybody. This is a beautician who had fungal infection. He was just riding his motorcycle, na puwing siya, ito nangyari sa kanya. Dito naman, recurrent herpes uh, infection of the eye. The other one below is trauma and improper use of contact lenses, bacterial infection, staphylococcal infection. Even if you treat the infection, it, it leaves a, a scar and you need transplants. Congenital opacities, chemical burns, Corneal perforating injury from trauma. These are also common. On the top is scar from measles keratitis. When we were in residency, we saw a lot of this because uh, of, of, the, of measles no? and the malnutrition combined. But because of the fortified uh, vitamin A snacks and food, measles vaccinations, this went down a lot. When the vaccination level went down again because of all sorts of things and fallacies and misinformation, we saw them again. So measles can cause uh, keratitis, which requires transplant. Post-cataract edema is another common, common reason for transplants, and so is keratoconus, or a weakness of the cornea, which results in a conical shape of the cornea instead of a sphere. Prior to the eye bank, these people were virtually hopeless to be able to see again. And all we could tell them was, kailangan nyo ng transplant, pero wala kami cornea, balik na lang kayo pag tinawagan namin kayo. We put them in a list which got longer and longer and longer. Some got married, some died, wala pa rin silang cornea. And the irony of it all is that the cornea is such a small tissue. That's the front of the eye. It's about 12 millimeters in diameter, but we get about 17 millimeters because we have a rim and about 0.5 millimeters thick. So... Um, we'll answer a question later, how many people can be helped with one cornea? And how many people can be helped with one eyeball? We, we store them in Optisol, which can keep the cornea for two weeks in refrigeration. We have to go back to our history. We cannot move forward in, unless we learn from our history, so we don't repeat the same mistakes. So I always include the history of eye banking, and no one can do this better than Dr. Salvador Salceda, and this was his Jimeniano de Ocampo lecture. He says, the history of eye banking is a fascinating, if not frustrating, history. 
and uh, it failed because of due to general anti-donation culture and lack of dedicated leadership and raging professional rivalries among the ophthalmologists who put up their own eye bank uh, in the past, no? Na kanya -kanya. There was, and there was no public funding and lack of technology. He was my mentor. And every day, almost every day, when I was in residency and then, then fellowship for a while in the Perry and Institute of Ophthalmology, he would tell me, you were not meant to do the ordinary, you were meant to do the extraordinary. Put up an eye bank. Grabe ang presyo. Anong gagawin ko? Paano gagawin ko to? No? Uh, I call them my angels. No? At a certain point, I left uh, PGH because I was disappointed even with other doctors. I saw the professional rivalries among the different consultants from different hospitals. We could not put up an eye bank. Everyone wanted it in their hot place, their telephone number, etc. I saw it with my own eyes. I went to Makati Med. I said, I can help better from outside. I said, Dr. Raul Forrest and the nuns of Mother Teresa. Why them? Because so many children were being brought to Makati Med who needed corneal transplants. And Dr. Forrest was the one who saw them. He saw the need. So when I told him I wanted to put up an eye bank, he said, he gave me, he opened his drawer and he got $500. Ito, puhunan mo to, put up an eye bank. None of us knew what to do. Then Frederick Griffith put up the International Federation of Eye and Tissue Banks. And I wrote to him to help us put up our eye bank in the Philippines. But he had a very bad experience with Filipinos prior to that. He thought the Filipinos were persona non grata to him. So he was not excited to come to that country. Mabuti na lang, another angel came along. Khalid Tabara, uh, who happened to be a member of the board of the International Federation of Eye and Tissue Banks, and he saw here the need for an eye bank. So after that, Doc, Mr. Griffith came here grudgingly for a little bit more than a day, but all of us doctors got together to show him the need. So he was convinced. And these were the first people who believed in the cause. Uh, some of them just humored me, but the others really believed. And then we had these other angels, the Venetia, Angara, and my father, and President Ramos, who helped. And here's Mr. Griffith. No? We, we really, they really helped us have a law passed, which is the act to promote corneal transplantation in the country, passed in six months. Uh, my father was in the Supreme Court. Angara was Senate President. The Venetia was House Speaker and President Ramos. They were all friends. So everything fell into place. This was patterned after the Coroner's Act of Baltimore. And was quite progressive and aggressive. It allowed the medical legal officers to give the eye bank, the corneal tissue of dissidents who are unidentified and unaccompanied, even with no explicit consent under special circumstances, and they passed it. And this was meant to jumpstart the eye bank, just jumpstart, because what was supposed to happen was that little by little, hospitals, the DOH, they would all help in order to you know, uh, change the culture to one of pro-donation. Unfortunately, it did not happen. So we'll go back, we'll go to that later. We have been surviving on medical legal cases until 2021. Now, at least, balance na. So we inaugurated the iBank um, in the Makati Medical Center. So many of these people have passed away since then. And the iBank trustees have changed through the years. And now we have some from Visayas, from Mindanao, and Northern Luzon. This was her staff in the beginning, five regular employees. In 2019, we had 27. That was pre-pandemic. We had to downsize dramatically during the pandemic. What does the iBank do? The iBank retrieves, processes, stores, and distributes corneal tissue or even scleral tissue, eye tissue around the country. We have been partners with Philippine Airlines, Cebu Pacific, Victory Liner, Paragas, you know, Sutra, and LBC. Philippine Airlines and Cebu Pacific transport and tissue free of charge all over the country. Cornea donation. Cornea donation is much easier than whole organ donation. We do it within 12 hours after cardiorespiratory death, not during brain death, but after cardiorespiratory death. If refrigerated, we can wait up to 20 hours after death. Hence, it's usually done in the morgue or in the hospital room or even in the home of the donor. We don't need an operating room. Who can be an eye or cornea donor? Almost everyone. There are very few contraindications. And I saw the one of the quiz, quizzes, Kanina, the questions, old age, 
full organ cancer, diabetes mellitus, and other systemic illnesses are not contraindications to becoming a cornea donor. And the cornea is immunologically privileged, as you say, as they say. But these are the few contraindications. If you've had eye surgery, we can still get your cornea. If you have high grade, pwede pa rin. No? Wag lang cancer sa mata. What happens to the corneas donated? We, if we get only the cornea of the donor, we put it right away in optisol. If we get the whole eyeballs, we put it, uh, we section them. The cornea we put in optisol storage medium. The sclera we will clean very well in the eye bank and put it in absolute alcohol. The cornea can last in storage for four, for two weeks, but it never lasts that long because the need is very great. The absolute alcohol, the sclera can last for two years. Tissue evaluation, gross examination, slit lap examination, and specular microscopy where we count the cells and look at the quality and number of cells. And we do serology, like you would for a organ donor and organ recipient. Those who are suitable, the tissue that are suitable are transplanted. Those not suitable are used for education, research, and training. Very important to Filipinos is cornea donation disfiguring. Ayoko ng pangit. Gusto ko maganda pa rin ako. Pagtingnan ako dun sa aking ano, ang aking labi dun sa aking burol, no? Uh, there's even one who said, "Baka pagtawanan na ako ng mga kawaway ko sa sabi ang pangit mo, nakalubog ang mata mo." Things like that. We want to look good even in death. And the, the answer here is cornea donation or even eye donation is not disfiguring. We replace the cornea with eye caps. Uh, which actually has spikes, which actually gives the eye a very good shape and keeps the eyelid from opening. So it's even nicer. If we remove the whole eyeball, we also reconstruct the orbit and put an eye cap. So there's no disfiguring or disfigurement, okay? All our donors, even the mga artistas, had open caskets. And this is an example of a man who had trauma who, after his corneas were removed, so he looks very natural. Hindi lubugang mata. Do recipients know the identity of the donor family? They are made anonymously and we keep the identities confidential. The only time you will know each other is if both parties agree to let their identities be known. How does the donor family benefit? You know, one of our best advocates is Ali Soto, uh, whose son Miko, no? she donated his corneas when he tragically died. He fell from a building and sabi niya, it actually gives you comfort, no? a mother who lost her son, to know that part of your son still lives on and you were able to help other people. She has remained close to one of the recipients, si Esme. She was a little girl. I did her coronal transplant. She was six years old. Dalaga na nagtatrabaho na. And she said her friends don't call her Esme, Esmeralda. They call her Mika. So my point is, it's comforting. Part of your loved one lives on and you're able to transform the life of a person or of persons, that even just two, it could even be more. From 1995 to pre-pandemic, what it meant to have the eye back was people who needed transplants had hoped to see within a reasonable time frame. We don't have to wait indefinitely. We, didn't, we did not also have to depend on tissue from abroad that cannot find surgeons who will take them kasi hindi sila maganda. We had the pick of the best tissue of our countrymen, for our countrymen. And we developed world-class corneal transplant surgeries because we had tissue to use. This is an example of a patient with measles keratitis. This is a post-transplant case, two years after the transplant. Tinanggal na yung mga tahi. It's right after may mga tahi yan. No? What types of corneal transplants do we do in the Philippines? We do the all. No? Uh, we do the penetrating or full thickness, which is the classical and still the most commonly done in the world. Lamellar, where we can change just the front or just the back, depending on the pathology of the cornea. So if you have, you can use the back of the cornea from one patient and the front of the cornea for another. You can use the periphery of the cornea for other, other patients. We also do Boston keratoprosthesis. This is a artificial cornea embedded in a uh, normal natural cornea. And we'll show you some pictures of that as well. For penetrating keratoplasty, this is the classical way, no? Wherein uh, a donor, um, a sphere is, um, is replaced, or as rather the abnormal cornea is replaced, the central part with a healthy cornea from the eye back and sutured into place. Wait, I'm just a while. Okay, then we also have lamellar keratoplasty where we can do endothelial keratoplasty, wherein we change the inner part of the cornea. So you have, for example, uh, pseudofecate bullous keratopathy after cataract surgery or fuchs endothelial dystrophy. This is the abnormal part. 
even if the other parts of the cornea become swollen, it's because of this. We can just change this and replace it with healthy cornea. It's more high tech and we actually pre-cut the tissue. Um, this is an example of a patient of mine two months after penetrating keratoplasty and cataract surgery. And this is a patient two months after DSEC. Note, the transplant is just inside, no sutures, the eye is stronger, recovery is faster, and chances of ejection are also less. Now, anterior lamellar naman, we also do, wherein we change the man the front of the cornea and we leave behind the endothelium. Cases like keratoconus or else scars of the cornea, which are, do not affect the endothelium, we can replace just the deep anterior lamellar portion. Again, this is technically, or there's more tensile strength and less likelihood of ever having rejection. You can have it for a lifetime because your endothelium is still yours. Keratoprosthesis surgery is for eyes wherein traditional corneal transplantation carries a very poor prognosis of success. You have repeated graft failure, chemical burns, stem cell deficiency, and aniridia. And also, cautiously, if you have a strong heart, in chosen cases of Stevens-Johnson syndrome that still have sufficient tears and can still adequately close their eyes. So these are examples of patients. This is a patient who had um, limbal stem cell deficiency. This is the keratoprosthesis with the back plate embedded in the human cornea. And this is a more uh, sort of uh, extreme, no? Stevens Johnson's uh, syndrome patient, no? Wala na siyang, ano eh, uh, what do you call this? Wala nang sulpus, no? But you were able to reconstruct this eye and then buccal mucosal graft from the cheeks of the inside, no? And he was able to see 2040. So it's almost like a miracle, but these are drastic patients who are at the at wit's end, no? desperate, but we can still help them. Whole eye donations enable us to use the sclera for other types of surgery. And for example, this is the sclera stored in, a, in alcohol, absolute alcohol. This is an eye, again, status post keratoprosthesis. And you see that white patch is uh, the patch from the sclera in the eye bank to cover the drainage device or the, yeah, the glaucoma drainage device, which is there to treat the glaucoma. Nowadays, because our corneas have a, have a very wide rim, what many uh, glaucoma surgeons do is they partner with their cornea counterparts and then they ask them, Pwede ba amin ng retaso? So they get the rim and they use it for these types of surgery. We can even use the entire sclera to reconstruct the eye socket after the eye is removed. So that, that way, it's cosmetically nice. So we have the know-how and technology to do various transplants, but without the eye tissue to do so, all this knowledge cannot be put to use. Hence, we have been very busy with the eye bank, and we are an NGO, we are not government, but we have tie-ups in various government agencies, lectures, sports events, media, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and um, we have never stopped. Tuloy-tuloy ito, because it's necessary. Advocacy is necessary. In 2005, we had a Grand Anvil Award winning campaign where 52 celebrities post for June de Leon shedding tears of hope for the eye bank. Every Sunday, inaabakan ito, may mga pictures. No? You name it, A-listers were part of this novel campaign. And we also worked with the LTO, you know, in 2019 before the, or 18, before the pandemic, when Phil Nels had with Dr. Sarmiento, we really, really met with the LTO, with General Galvante, to make sure that the question of organ donation is really asked. And now it is asked in online application. Problema, sometimes the people in LTO themselves tell the people put um, applying when they ask, ano to? Ay, ilagay mo lang no. Aside from that, the organ donation uh, aspect is in the back of the license. It should be in front. Dapat nakalagay in bold letters, organ donor. But at least this is a start. We have had tie-ups with celebrities. No? Remember, Jay Lagan was our first celebrity donor. And then we had Miko Soto in the early 2000s. And later on, AJ Perez, the son of Cesar Montano, whole, corn, whole eyeball. Yeah, no? We had a soap opera that featured a child who needed a transplant. I did a cameo role. We've had so many media uh, engagements. But you cannot naman expect that. Because every time a celebrity donates a cornea, we, we make sure to really drum it up. And awareness goes up. The number of people signing donors' cards goes up. It becomes easier to ask. But we can't no keep relying on celebrities to die. Diba? We have to have our own sustained uh, campaigns. Uh, late last year, we had a beautiful, beautiful uh, 
uh, documentary in Eyewitness, Sandra Aguinaldo had it beautiful, and I hope you can get to watch it, Samata ni Joel. We still use this today when we go around the country putting up eye retrieval centers. See, but no matter what we do, you can have as many PR campaigns, as many media campaigns, but unless you have a good hospital retrieval program, everything is for naught. This is the most effective tool for a successful coronal and eye donation program. The PR campaigns, donor cards, don't mean anything if at the time of death, nobody asks about it in the hospital. So it has to be a concerted effort. It's the point of sale as the advertising people will say, you have to ask. And this is where we really fall short. And aside from asking, in a hospital retrieval program, information about the eye bank, about cornea donation, transplantation, in strategic locations is vital. The more the people see, the more they'll say yes, the more likely they will say yes when you ask them. Now, this is the peculiar to the Philippines. Because of our uh, Maryland Coroners Act, which we did so well, up to 93% of our donors from 1995 to 2021 were medical legal cases. They were young, yes, but the problem is this advantage was it led to complacency of the Department of Health and the hospitals. And there are among SORS and IBA, let's not anymore try you know, to develop our, our, our hospital programs, retrieval programs. Now, up to 2017, all our donors came from Manila and we just kept sending them out. Metro Manila and the Environ, it's not up to Bulacan, et cetera. And, um, but up 2017, with the help of PhilNOS, we started really putting up more retrieval centers outside Metro Manila. And we had others in the pipeline there, no? Up to 2017. And then, sorry, up to 2019, rather, before the pandemic struck. And we were doing quite well. Things were looking up. Our waiting time was down to three months. Imagine that, no? Then COVID struck. COVID struck. And what happened? Review. March 16, the whole of Luzon was locked up, locked down. PGH was the first hospital designated as a COVID-19 referral center. The IBANC is in PGH. Virtually all non-COVID admissions ceased. These were ophthalmology residents, you know, on duty in the ICU and the COVID wards. Specialty departments were fused into three teams. So everything closed. The IBANC reopened in June 15, 2020. Now, even our dog couldn't walk. Remember that? Lockdown was so strict. So what happened to our hospital and funeral home partners before lockdown? They all disappeared because they were all COVID centers, most of them. Then even the PNP morgues disappeared because of lockdown. People weren't going out. There were no accidents, no trauma, nothing. So it was really, really a standstill. But the, the impact was global. This is, for example, in Mexico. They had a very good program, but you see what happened after COVID. No? And um, it went down 88% reduction in coronal transplants no? in public institutions. Same in Brazil. They had a very good program, but again, bagsak. No? And until now, it's not the same. None of it is the same. So the sources of transplantable coronal tissue decreased due to the pandemic, but the number of persons needing transplants continued to grow. And programs in most hospitals and PNP also stood still. There are now 458 patients in the waiting list of the IBANC. This is better than January. January we had 500. So it you know, seems that we're, we're doing a little better now than last year and early this year. Waiting time was six months, down from one year and more last January. So our efforts to ed educate and spread advocacy don't stop. And we are starting to see a slight increase in tissue retrieval this last month. Up to today, the coronal tissue yield around the world has not reached pre-pandemic levels. This is in Asia, United States, South America, Europe, and Africa, but especially, of course, in Asia. No? Oh, wala pa. It looks dismal, diba? Look at that. In 2016, it was even higher. 2017, we were okay, you know, above 800. No? Then year 2020, bumagsak ng content. 2021, 2022 was pretty bad. Now, 2023, we're starting to go up again. This is a a uh, very conservative projection. Hopefully we'll reach about 400, hopefully more, no? And I want to, you look at that, no? There's a spike towards uh, last month. And this is really hope. We are having hope, no? So I'd like to now um, concentrate on strategies, silver linings, and opportunities. What are we doing? We're renewing personal visits and fora to the hospital partners, and we are actually entering into MOAs with new hospitals and LGUs. 
we are having wet labs as well. Baguio hanggang Marawi yan, tuloy-tuloy yan. No? Uh, if you see the ones in red were actually established during the time of COVID. No? And we, are, we have a pipeline for uh, Zambales, sorry, sorry, for Batangas, Palawan, Iloilo, Zamboanga, Isabela, Bo, pipeline. We are renewing and strengthening ties with the PNP. We want them to be aware that their scene of the crime operatives must always look for donor cards in the possession of victims. If they see a donor card, tawa kayo kaagad, no? Uh, because we can still get that. We don't need the person hooked to a machine. Funeral home retrieval programs. We are also dealing with funeral homes, no? Because uh, again, we can wait until before cremation, before embalming, up to 12 hours after death to get the corneas or the eyeballs. And so, hanggat pwede, no? until the last minute, pwede pang humingi. So we're doing this again. No? And so we're doing as much as we can to continue and to, to, and to grow. So eye banking is in crisis worldwide, but the Philippines definitely. No? But we are starting to see the light. No? As in every crisis, there are also opportunities. Silver linings. Now, more ophthalmologists have taken on the challenge of being champions for cornea donation in their hospitals and locales. More private organizations are donating to the eye bank. Uh, and for the first time, we have more hospital source tissue than we do the medical legal. And this is a step in the right direction. We are hoping for a strengthened relationship with the DOH. And one thing they have to do, plantilla, plantilla, plantilla. How can you have a serious donation program if you have no dedicated hospital transplant coordinators in your hospitals. We need them. That was the common cry when we had our meeting last year. Kailangan may plantilla, may item. We want the DOH to issue an AO to make required inquiry and request the norm in hospitals to also make organ donation explicitly asked for in advanced directives for DNR. It is not, okay? We want also the DOH and the Bureau of uh, Customs to make it easier for us to import corneas from other countries like Sri Lanka, where they have a lot of corneas. And we need PhilHealth to cover tissue processing because they do not. And also we need to have stem cell and tissue culture technology available for clinical use. They're still in clinical trials in Japan and Singapore. Hopefully we can have them. And when that happens, one cornea with this endothelium can supply 30 eyes. There's 12 million people around the world in need of transplants. Only 150,000 are done a year. This will help a lot. And we can contribute to that in Asia if we just work together. So how can you help those who are watching, those who own hospitals? Huh? Uh, encourage your own relatives to become cornea donors and consider donating your corneas of your loved ones when they pass and sign up yourselves. Encourage your hospitals to put up, put up their own retrieval programs. Little by little, they will all add up have advocacy campaigns in communities, organizations for coronal donation, and donate to the IBAN here, tax deductible. Reality check. Up to recently, our state was almost like we had gone back to 1995 uh, because well, well, and tissue and damning recipients lined up. There was desperation on the part of patients and frustration on the part of surgeons. Some even went to India to have their transplants. It shows how fragile our system is and how so much is needed to be done to institutionalize deceased organ and tissue donation. It should be an all of society, all of government approach. But there's a major difference between today and 1995. We have already planted the seeds in the last 28 years. We just need to water the seeds and fight the right fertilizer to allow eye banking to flourish even more than it did before. And I want to put the spotlight on one hospital that gives us hope which is the Paulina J. Garcia Memorial Research and Medical Center, Cabanatuan, and Dr. Pius is from there. No? If these are the seven uh, satellite retrieval uh, centers, and look at them, no? they really stand out. So what are they doing right? And if they can do it, it's a government hospital in the central Luzon, why can't the others? Others can certainly do it. And we can talk about those strategies later. So 15 hospital retrieval programs, seven satellite retrieval units, nine non-MOA hospitals, 16 mortuaries. If only six, if only each hospital would deal even three donors a month, we would wipe out our waiting list in half a year. Imagine that. So there is hope. If one hospital can do it, a government hospital at that, others can do it as well. So with that, I'd like to say that with perseverance, cooperation among the stakeholders and God's grace, I believe we will be in a much better place in the near future 
and continue to be a leader in iBanking. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma'am Mingita. That was, uh, that was indeed excellent. I have well, a couple of questions, but I'll, I'll reserve them towards the Q&A. Uh, and really, thank you so much for that wish list, especially, uh, <laughs> and and other preparations, especially for the hospitals to thank take you. care of. Uh, I Mamang, get? Okay, I'll yes. stop sharing, Luna. Okay. Yes, well, yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. It's a very, very timely message. Uh, it's really a big appeal to our entire country. Okay, so to put this up. Uh, but before we proceed with the open forum, we have our reactor, Tama ba, Raymond? Yes, ma'am. Uh, that you would introduce uh, this one, my national perspective, si Ma'am Mingita, uh, about that IBANK. And let's see how a regional center such as uh, the PJG in Nueva Ecija is coping and how the efforts are translated in the periphery. So go ahead, Raymond, and introduce Thank you. that. Our thank you. Panel. Thank you, Ma'am Anget. Thank you so much. And thank you to uh, Ma'am Mingita. Again, an excellent, excellent presentation. Po. Before I introduce our reactor, reminding everyone that for today's Q&A session, we encourage everyone to put in your questions already. Uh, so, when we questions, we'll choose the most upvoted ones. And we encourage everyone to type, start typing in your questions in the Zoom Q&A or in the comment section of Stop COVID Deaths or 2VUP Facebook pages or in the TVUP YouTube channel. Okay, next up, our reactor, uh, who, as we mentioned uh, at the top of the coverage, uh, chair of the Department of Ophthalmology at Angeles Medical Center in Angeles City, Pampanga. Also, a cornea and external disease consultant at the Paulino J. Garcia Memorial Research and Medical Center in Cabanatuan, Nueva Ecija. Please give a warm virtual welcome to Dr. Payus Ocampo. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Pa. So, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Padilla for inviting me also to be a reactor. No? That was a very uh, well-delivered talk by Dr. Padilla. Well, uh, it started uh, when I was in uh, PGH, no? where I did my training in Tornia. So Dr. Abadilla was one of my mentors there. So I was excited to start my practice here in the province to serve the community you know, for corneal transplant. So I noticed that during my start uh, around 2017, uh, the waiting time for cornea before I will be able to do transplants are uh, three to six months. Sometimes it will take longer. So I tried uh, looking for ways on how to to lessen the, no, no, the waiting time for my patients, private and uh, government. And I was so blessed that uh, PJG, I was invited to be one of the uh, corneal, uh, to be the corneal specialist there uh, and be active in the residency training program for, for, for PJG. So the first thing that I did is I asked my resident, how many patients are dying in PJG? So that's the first thing that I did. No? I talked to my resident and can, do, do we have a way na maging cornea retrieval center tayo here in PJG? Because uh, I learned that uh, in Manila pala, uh, there are hospital partners by the IBAC, like yeah, ISA, uh, that if they get uh, cornea, there's like a deal no, that they will be able to use one cornea for their uh, institution and the other cornea will be for the IBAC. Because uh, what I noticed is that uh, all, all of the cornea specialists here in the Philippines are so dependent on the IBAC, but we are not doing enough to help the bank in return. So, in your number one, no, the commitment of the uh, cornea specialist na mag-contribute sa cornea retrieval program. Number two is the involvement of the residents. So, in, in, in PJG, the one who harvests the cornea are my residents. Uh, as early as pre-res, uh, first year, they, they do it. No? For me, since I'm part of the training institution, that's surgical practice already for them. At least they're, they're used to... Uh, 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 improving their surgical skills. Then, uh, the next thing is, we are also blessed that uh, my resident during that time uh, had a friend in IM department. Eh, usually naman sa mga hospitals, sa IM tsaka surgery, sila yung maraming uh, yung mga namamatay, disease, no? So, sila yung nandun natin makukuha yung mga donors. So, fortunately, during that time, the IM resident uh, uh, was very enthusiastic na magkaroon ng uh, transplant sa PJG. So I, I talked to her, sabi ko, cornea is very easy to do kasi wala nang cross-matching. And there's, iBank is very active, no? So immediately, we did a memorandum of agreement. Then we immediately started. We started the program of cornea retrieval. So at first, for the first few months, 
hirap na hirap kami. Parang nakakakawala kami. Isa lang, once every other month or twice lang. Then I talked to Dr. Padilla. Sabi ko, ano yung ginagawa ng Baguio? Why, 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 why are they successful? No? Since she told me that they have a transplant coordinator. Fortunately, in PJG, the, the hospital is very supportive sa amin. Then, nagkaroon ka agad ng plantilla and transplant coordinator namin. Then from there, dire-diretso na. Dire-diretso na yung harvest. Then yung transplant coordinator, uh, eventually na-develop na yung skills on how to talk to patients. Kasi yun yung clincher eh. Yung skills ng coordinator para hindi ma-offend yung mga patients. Minsan kasi ganun yung nagiging problem. Then information dissemination dun sa, sa hospital lang mismo. Kasi if you imagine, no, uh, PJG is a government hospital. Thousands ang mga patients dyan. So you expect at least three to five deaths in a day siguro. For sure, magkakaroon yan. No? Kung yung birth rate, yung death rate, patas din. So makakuha ka lang, sabi mo lang, kung 150 na mamatay, 15 patients yung mamatay, no? 30 eyes ka agad. <laughs> so marami yan. That's why uh, very important na yung apat, no? yung sinabi ko yung apat, cornea specialist, kailangan talaga mag-commit sila na maging active sa retrieval. Number two, involved yung mga residents. So what I did is sa mga residents ko, I make sure na merong isang gumagawa ng paper about eye banking. Kasi that will push the resident na maghanap ng mga donors. Kasi syempre kailangan niya sa paper niya. Then yung IM department, saka surgery, number three, yung involvement ng other departments like IM and surgery, ER, kung saan nagkakaroon ng mga namamatay, dapat involved lahat sila dito and alam nila. No? So, and of course, the most important thing, yung magko-coordinate sa lahat. So uh, if I'm given the chance, no, I would encourage all institutions, no, yung mga mayroong ophthalmology training programs, this will be very easy for all of us kasi we have residents to do it. So yung plantilla na lang talaga yung plincher ng, ng transplant coordination. Tapos of course, you communicate with IM, which uh, for sure they will be very, very willing to help. Uh, regarding naman dun sa kung kakausapin mo, kung open yung patient sa, ano, sa tawag, being a donor, most of the relatives, hindi siya magiging issue. It's very easy kasi uh, magkakaroon pa ng legacy yung uh, uh, ano nila. No? Then eventually, pag lahat ng mga training institutions nagkaroon na yan, it will be easier na pa, for other hospitals, even private hospitals, to be part of this one. So uh, I would like to thank Dr. Rapadilla already for uh, starting the IBANC kasi it's very easy na lang on our part to, to do this. No? Uh, and uh, it's also good na yung census ngayon kasi if you notice dati, Ang nakukuha lang natin yung mga young patients, young donors. Meron kasing advanced na uh, corneal transplantation na yung tawag din, yung DMEC, wherein it will be better kung ang donors natin yung mga older patients. So now, nakakaroon na rin tayo ng mga patients na namatay of natural death. Okay? So, uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? Thank you so much, Dr. Payus. We'll, we'll have those questions later on po, no? And we'll... we'll... We'll, we'll, ano po, we'll handle all of those questions later in the Q&A session. But before we proceed with the Q&A, uh -huh. meron lang po tayo. What, what do we have, Mamangge? Yeah, we have a quick break for our special public service announcement for today. So hope the video works. Cross your fingers. <laughs> Go ahead, TVUP. sound. You the sound. It's the sound pa rin. Okay. Sige. Tatapusin na lang po natin. Sayang. Walang sound. <laughs> oh, I think that is the, supposed to be our vaccination push. Yes po. Those who yes, have po. the birthday. But nevertheless, let's go and proceed with our Q&A session. And, yes po. Uh, yes, go ahead, po. Raymond. Yes, thank you so much, Ma'am Mangge. But before we proceed lang po, just wanted to remind everyone that the COVID communication public service announcement, just one of the many creative outputs of Stop COVID its team to push for COVID-19 vaccinations po. So, uh, obviously, if you have been watching our show po, there is a working, yung po yung sound, no? A video clip for uh, for this one and we hope you'll be able to share that one in all of your social media accounts. Stay safe and stay well. Magpasama na po sa Bakuna Center. Okay, I'll start off with the very first question that we have uh, for this one. Uh, and paano ba to? We'll choose the ones that are upvoted 
We'll start off, uh, obviously, kay Ma'am Minggita. This comes from Dr. Joseph Tortona. How many recipients benefit from one cornea donor and the age range recommendable uh, pagig sa pagiging donor daw po? Great question. No? Uh, because of technology, remember Payo said there's a DMEC, there's a and there's anterior lamellar. Now before, if you use the whole thickness of the cornea, it's one do one recipient for the cornea in the middle. But the periphery can be used by other people, like for uh, the scleral patch grafts, which I said, which I said, maybe five more people for that, no? And or the stem cells themselves can be used. So it depends what you use the cornea for. If you do an anterior lamellar and a DMEC, that's two people already in one central corneal button, okay? Now, if you have the whole eyeball, it's even more people because each sclera can be divided into five uh, sections. So it's 10 people with a sclera and then, uh, then at least two people for the cornea. So again, it depends on the surgery you're going to use it for. And um, with technology, we can use it for more people. It used to be the age range was from two years old up to, first they put the age range at 65, but that upper age range no longer, uh, limit no longer holds. Now, again, because of technology. As, um, as we said earlier, we can use the corneas even that have not very good cell counts. We can use them for anterior lamellar where we don't need the endothelium. We can use them for uh, even for capro surgery. We can use them for tectonic or patch grafts. No? And then for old do older, older donors, they do even better for the, and and, uh, it's called as a, um, Decimase membrane and the helical keratoplasty. So the lower age range of two years old was because the cornea is a little too thin and too floppy before that age. However, we have exceptions. And I'd like to, our youngest donor was a, was a baby girl who was born with anencephaly. She died 14 hours after death. And her parents decided even before she was born that they would like to donate her corneas to the eye bank. Beautiful story. And her corneas went to a, um, a toddler, you know, and then who's now um, six years old and studying. So my point is, we make exceptions. No? For very young children, we can still give the cornea. So right now, ay ay na namin magbigay ng youngest and eldest. But for the for the normal shape and rigidity of the cornea, it's two years old as usually two years old up. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, That's mamaya. great, though. Yeah, that's an eye-opener, Mamingita, because huh. when you said anencephaly, I am an obstetrician and we practice also in many government hospitals. Huh. We have a lot of anencephaly cases that we were not aware huh. that these are potential donors. We I can think still that, donate. And we have infants because yes. it's born with congenital corneal opacity. That's right. Yeah. So that's a very important thing. Parang hindi kami naabot ng messaging. So yes. now, naabot ka, na, nakaabot tayo sa isa. Yeah. So I have another question from the audience. Uh, this is from Dr. Ish Ludan. Ito kasama ko to sa Cardinal. Dr. Ish, if a private hospital wants to participate in the retrieval program, how to proceed and coordinate po? Okay. So maybe I can, uh, Ma'am Mingita, and also let's ask Dr. Ocampo what was his experience as well. So Ma'am Mingita first, Ma'am. Okay, we, we deal with private and government hospitals. Our biggest contributor now among the private is Asian Hospital and Medical Center in Alabang. You know? And we have many partners, but they're the most, because they're the equivalent of uh, counterpoint of Paulino J. Garcia you know, in private. All you have to do is contact the IBANG and tell us you're interested to be a partner. Then we will already draw up. We have a template of AMOA. Okay? And then we will have your legal look at it. If it's okay, then we agree. Then we will teach your staff how to do the counseling how to do the retrieval, we have wet labs, et cetera, et cetera. So we have already a template of what to do. Now, all you have to do is contact us, okay? Contact the iBank and the numbers are, are there no? in the slide. Or you can just go to our website. Um, or I can, I can give you the number now, 0917-935995. Mm. That's Globe, just text, okay? You want to be a partner, you're interested, we will contact you. Same thing. Okay. Sure. So, Dr. Payus, anong naging experience po ninyo? Sa AUF, tsaka sa PJG, meron bang mga concerns? AUF is a private hospital. Yeah. Yung AUF, I'm talking to Dr. Andrew already. My partner in LASIK, no? Uh, na buhay namin. Dati kasi, I think they had the MOA already. Kaya lang, medyo naging busy, hindi naging active. Sabi ko sa kanya, dapat active tayo para 
magkano din tayo ng for, for our private patients kasi we will share the one eyes for us one eyes for the eye mak makakabawas na dun sa back backlog natin sa surgery at the same time makakadulong din tayo sa eye mak so I will do it <laughs> I will do it it's very easy naman kasi the well, the eye mak is very easy to call then they will teach the ano ang magiging challenge lang kasi pag yung nasa malayong lugar so kailangan talaga matrain yung mga staff doon pag private pag from the designs ni Dalam. That's great. So Raymond, may questions pa ba tayo? Ako magtatanong din mamaya. Go. Yes, pa <laughs> questions. Um what question? I think uh, coming in from one of our lay people po no na who is really uh, this this is not uh, what I'm driving at is this is not the first time that I've seen this type of question po no? coming in from Mamaribik. Uh, does prolonged exposure to gadgets affect the healthy condition of our cornea? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, usually it's dry eyes, no? gadgets. No? Uh, the most common uh, complaint is dry eyes because we know when you're exposed to gadgets, you don't blink when you're always on the computer. You tend not to blink as often. Mm -hmm. You have to consciously blink and rest every uh, well, they say 20, 20, 20, no? rest for 20 seconds every 20 minutes by looking 20 feet away. 20, 20, 20. Or if you find it too cumbersome every hour, I say rest for five minutes, close your eyes or look far away. Walk around is also better for your health. Uh, the blue light affects your sleep pattern, not so much the eyes, but the sleep pattern. Huh? And of course, UV rays also affects the vision and affects the macula, affects the lens. Huh? So what I tell them, if you don't want to get insomnia before you want to sleep, shift, even take your eyes off the gadget or put a blue light filter. Okay, so basically it's more the dryness and the eye strain. If you're astigmatic and you have correction errors, which you don't correct, it can make things worse as well. And there are studies that show that children who are always on the gadgets tend to be more myopic, nearsighted than those who are not. So there's a suggestion also that you go out, tell your children to go out to play at least 30 minutes a day under the sun. It will help make their eyes less myopic, okay? Uh, otherwise, you'll end up with more myopic children. Ayun. Okay. okay. Let them play outside. Right. <laughs> okay. Mamang, so, get your questions. Ko. Yeah. So, nakalagay dito, do you have an honor walk or any acknowledgement, a little ritual to pay homage to the donors before yes. their eyes are harvested? So, that's something that we want ah, to uh, Mariano Marcos, highlight. Mariano Marcos has a has an honor, honor walk. Okay. For the donors, it's a beautiful. I think also the Eastern Visayas. So these are DOH hospitals, Eastern Visayas Medical Center, you know, in Tacloban. What they do is, uh, they the U.S. also some hospitals have this. So after any organ donor or tissue donor, after the donation, they bring them to the morgue. You know, but there's like the medical workers, the nurses, the doctors. They line the corridors for them, and give them an honor, like a like a final salute. It's beautiful, no? Mm -hmm. And you can see it in the website of the iBank and the website of Mariano Marcos Hospital. Uh, so they do an honor walk. Kami naman in the iBank, we always give them um, a certificate of donation that can be they can display. We give them uh, snacks for the for the what we call this for the week, no? And uh, we give them recognition. Definitely, we give them recognition. Uh, there was a time some hospitals have their own way of encouraging donations. Some even say one member of your family will have free eye checkups for life. You know, going on. There are many ways. No? But that's why I want to dispel the, the fallacy that Filipinos don't donate. They do it if you just talk to them properly. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I want to try to get, remove this notion, especially the younger people now are more open to it. Eh. Kuminsan, sasabihin ng asawa ng namatay, yes, gusto ko, pero nakikialo naman yung ganan. <laughs> you know, the other extended family. But the younger people are more open. No? And... Um, you just have to tell them, makakatulong kayo at buhay pa yung mahal nyo sa buhay. Mabubuhay pa siya sa iba. And uh, it, it, it ano eh, tamang, tamang paraan lang talaga. Di ba payos sa inyo? Tamang, at ang galing ng transplant coordinator ninyo talaga. You know she does? <laughs> she, lets, she, makes, she makes life easier for the donor family. You know, all the paperwork, ginagawa niya. You know, they give them, they give them, um, um premium. Premium, premium. It, it is her who does that. But if all hospitals will make it a policy to give their donors something, some premium, some discount or something, sana, di ba? Or the DOA should have an AO or something. I don't know. But you see, these are kanya-kanyang discarte. But 
yung donor, yung transplant coordinator nitong uh, Paulino J, she tells us, tinutulungan ko pa yung mga nurses sa wards na magbibigay ng donor. Yung, she really goes out of her way. Talagang passionate siya. Unlike others, nakihintay lang ng tawag ng living-related donation. Yun lang. Ito talagang she does her part. And that's why it's key. The transplant coordinator, the ophthalmologist, the residents, and the management of the hospital. Kailangan seryoso sila. At may plantilla. <laughs> may mm-hmm. item talaga. May oh, item. Hindi pwede multitasking, no? O sige, today head nurse ka nito. Bukas, oh kaya kung may trans, kung may donor, sige punta ka. It cannot be like that. Kailangan may plantilla talaga. Yeah, that's very great, no? So, ang concern namin is like incentivization is one. You have highlighted that, no? Uh, number two is that we are able to provide uh, an infrastructure to support uh, the donors that will help them, especially if it's uh, in their time of bereavement. But what about the uh, general education of the public? Uh, we have a different culture, shall we say, uh, compared with, say, our neighbors like in Thailand. I, 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 I'm a practicing laparoscopist and we go to Thailand because they have more cadaveric uh, uh, availability because they are, they are less mindful and they're very open to that. Do we have to make an educational pitch, put it in our curriculum to make us more open to this type of, uh, uh, this yeah. type of uh, donation program, ma'am? What, what are your thoughts? Definitely, definitely. It should start. That's why there has to be a close relationship between the Department of Education and Department of Health on this because it has to start from a very young age. It should be part of the curriculum. We have to start, you know, changing the mindset as early as that. Because imagine we're just an NGO. We're an NGO, for heaven's sake. You know, we're not a wealthy NGO. It has to be an all of government, all of society approach. And government meaning DOH, DepEd, no? DICT, DILG. You know, kailangan it's a totality. Eh? It has to be. You're right. Education is important. No? Education. We have materials. Eh? We have materials from all the experiences. The donors are speaking. The recipients are donor. The recipients are speaking. We have beautiful stories to share. Show it na lang in the schools, di ba? Pwede yan. No? Pakita niyo sa mga skwela para hindi sila, they will not have a bad or a, or a wrong attitude or impression of donation. Organ and tissue. Huh? Not just tissue, but organ donations. Mas mahirap yun kaysa cornea. Mas madali ang cornea. Dok Raymond, may tanong pa. Yes po, yes po. Qu- question, I did the, uh, and I will post this to Ma'am Mingita kasi this is the same question that I posed during our planning meeting, which is, I, I got I, I got two questions similar like this. So, um, if you have been a recipient of a donated po na cornea, when you die, pwede daw po ba yung maibigay din po? Na, as, as of now kasi, we don't accept the cornea, but we can use it for training and research, definitely. Mm. But we can get your entire eyeball and we can still use your sclera. We can still use your sclera. <laughs> so, as I'm saying now, we don't know in the near future, you know, tissue culture, for example, tissue culture, we can still, you know, uh, now the endothelial cells, the cornea, the marami, can be grown and cultured. And eventually, what we're looking forward to soon is that you can get those tissues, those cells, and inject them into the eye of a recipient. Mm-hmm. Tapos, ihiga na lang yung tao na pag ganito, to repopulate the endothelium. That's what's happening now uh, in clinical trials. No? So we can certainly use the eyes of the person who has had a transplant. But leave that up to the eye bank na lang. Ang, ang message ko siguro sa lahat ng tao, huwag na nyo isipin kung pwede kayo o hindi. Hayaan mo na lang kami mag-decide. Mm-hmm. Ang importante, mag-donor kayo, mag-sign kayo ng donor card. Then let the eye bank decide na lang if you're okay or not. We have our ways it find out. No? One is examining the eyes. If we feel the cornea is already not really good enough, we'll encourage you to donate the eyeball if you wish. No? Because the sclera can definitely be used. So I, it depends. It depends on many things. That's my answer. No? Technology is evolving. Technology is Thank evolving. You. Thank you, Ma'am Mingita. Question po would be uh, let me just read it po. Uh. Question that I got um are there any support networks or organizations for recipients of, for cornea transplant recipients in the Philippines? Dr. Payos. Support. Yes, sir. Support networks daw po in the Philippines. Oh, po. Mm-mm. I think the IBAC network will have. 
Dry bank lang? Dry bank lang yata yung... Uh, actually, actually, wala pa kaming alam na support network for coronal transit recipients per se. Mm-hmm. No? Uh, but there are support networks for certain diseases like aniridia, you know, those people who need uh, special help. No? But wala pa for transplant recipients themselves. Kasi parang they're so happy na eh. Parang <laughs> di, kailangan lang support ko kung hindi nakakita, no? But as soon as they can see, although the iBank, what we do is we keep in touch with the recipients because we mm-hmm. use them or we need their help. We call upon them rather when we need advocacy. For example, hihingi ng isang TV station, pwede mong maka-interview ng isang recipient. <clears throat> isang bata, isang matanda na gano'n na para for advocacy. Then the iBank is the one that contacts them through their doctors. But support system itself for those who have been recipients, wala pa eh. But maybe they might have some psychological thing. Huh? Because we have some patients mm. that say na nakikita ko yung ganito. They, they think that they can see through the eyes of the donor. Oh. You know what I, mean? huh? na, I remember a patient said na sinabi sa akin, nakita ko sa, sa salamin na kailangan ipagganti ko yung pagkamatay niya. Mga ganyan. Yung mga... <laughs> I think um, maybe psychological support also, just to assure them that you know nothing bad will happen to them by receiving the coyness of somebody else. No? And if they have issues, maybe it's more psychological also. Psychotherapy is necessary for some, for some. But okay. that's, that's an exception. That's an exception. Oh, very interesting. So, <laughs> uh, Dr. Pius, baka you can share some uh, case studies where it, you found it difficult to convince and then what were your methods or uh, ways or approach so that you'll be able to overcome these barriers. Tapos papakomment natin si Mami Gita, ano ba yung mga tips and tricks? Kasi definitely there are many barriers towards eye donation you want to support them. Well, so please share your experiences. Actually ma'am, uh, Dr. Ano, uh, I'm not involved talaga in talking to the patients. no. But at first, uh, may time na my residents are the one talking to them. So I realized na nagiging problem sometimes if the transplant coordinator is young. Kasi minsan, pag young yung transplant coordinator, medyo may authority ng konti yung, yung mga, syempre grieving yan eh, yung mga relatives. So nakuha namin si Ma'am Jasmine, she's uh, I think 50s, no? she's more mature, so, so she knows how to talk to the patients. I think that that one will be will uh, remove the ano, the problems na. Uh, yun lang, yun lang naman, doktor, eh. Parang kailangan lang makuha yung technique on how to talk to the patient, uh, to the patient's relative para hindi na magkakaroon ng issues. Uh, regarding sa ano naman, uh, ma'am, uh, ang problem kasi dahil nasa government kami, no, it's very difficult for for the relatives na asikasuhin yung paperwork ng patients. Na pag ginawa ni, ma- ni Ma'am Jasmine yung paperwork nila, approved na kagad yan, mag-donate. They will not even bother. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> na, wala na emotional part, basta mabawasan lang yung trabaho nila sa paglalakad ng papeles. <laughs> That's a very important, ano, ha? That's a very important tip ha, for government hospitals. Kasi, ilaglamo ang daming paperwork, ang daming red tape. If by donating, that will be handled by the transplant coordinator, ang laking bagay nun. Easily, tama yung sinabi ni Payos, no? Oo, tama yun. So, uh, one more, tama yung sinabing mature yung transplant coordinator, no? Hindi lang mature, eh. The transplant coordinator must be comfortable with death, must be comfortable with asking, must not be apologizing to the deceased family. You know? I always tell them, don't apologize for what you're doing. You condole with them, you express your sympathy. But your approach that is you're giving them a chance to live, leave a legacy of their loved one. That's, a, that's, a, that's how you present it. You know? And show them all the good things that can happen because of that. Then you be helpful and be comforting. You know? Uh, and do not rush them. So we, we teach, we, teach we, have a, we have a course for this. It's part of the, the workshop that we give, the wet lab, the workshops, is how to counsel. Our transplant coordinators do that also. And the DOH HOPE, hope uh, the um, Human Organ Procurement Effort, I also have to say thank you to them. You know, that time you saw the dip in the tissue, wala kaming, it's, they also help keep us alive, eh, yung multiple organ donor special cry uh, call out kay Arlene Buken. No? She was really helpful. And hindi na sila kidney-centric. Kidneys, corneas, li- ano, liver, lungs, pati heart, nakakuho na sila. So it has to really be ano, eh, uh, wagang, ano, a joint effort. So, yeah. mature. That's great. So from, apart from people on the ground that is, are very uh, 
accommodating and facilitating, no? So that will help. Uh, I'm a fan of AI. So Doc Raymond, you know that, no? So <laughs> will the, can there be an algorithm, for example, if the criteria has uh, for the organ donation fits, then the patient or the relatives are automatically offered. So uh, will that work? It will help. Uh, that will help. That will definitely help. Because right now, what we try to do with Phil Noss since, since 2017 was report all deaths. It's not happening because there's no strict, nobody's cracking the whip in government. Mm. Report all deaths. And once you have that AI, report all deaths. Even in the hospital, dapat, report all deaths. Even the ones... Um, who are already near death. I mean, this is for the organ donation, you know, a, a certain level, diba? Uh, Glasgow score, they must be reported. I mean, it's not like you're ghouls or vultures. No, it's just a matter of just, just being practical. No? Because who knows, these people might want to donate, but nobody's even bothering no? mm -hmm. they want to donate. But we have many foreigners who've signed donor cards abroad, but nobody asks them here. They want to donate. In fact, the common thing I hear is, sayang, if only somebody asked me, I would have said yes. You see, sayang, because we're not asking. That's why the hospitals have to change their mindset. And yes, if the hospitals have AI, type mo lang yung ano, pack, red light, oh, for counseling na yan, di ba? I mean, um, the automatic, the, the, required, the required inquiry and required request will also help if there's an AO for that. Because right away, you'll have it in your database. It's what made the U.S. Uh, change the landscape in the U.S. in 1988 when they passed that law. We don't need a law. We have an organization law. AO na lang yan. Required request, required inquiry. Lagay mo sa DNR form. Ipasok lang ninyo. Simple things like that. Wala. Wow, I can really feel that we really need a, a lot of work. But at least this is an eye-opener, definitely. So, Doc Raymond, let's see how our... Uh, audience uh, were able to answer to our quiz. Uh, yes, yes. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Ang. And thank you to Dr. Mingita and Dr. Payos for, for an engaging discussion. We'll now uh, go into the next item, po, no, which is our answers to um, our fun quiz. So can we have it on the screen right now? Thank you so much. So first question po will be, I, I, this one will be answered by Dr. Payos. The second one will be by Dr. Mingita. A patient with cancer, diabetes, or other conditions that are contraindicated for whole organ donation can still be able to donate their cornea. Is it true or is it false, Dr. Payos? Uh, you can also you can still donate, no? Uh, even if patient has uh, diabetes or cancer, there are only uh, infectious, no? Kamina, it was presented by Dr. Padilla. So, let mm. them Thank you so much. Here in the Zoom, 65% of those who participated said true and my 35% po na nag-false. Dito po sa, ano, sa ating uh, first question. So pwede pa rin po mag-donate ah, kahit po may ganong conditions. For our second question the, from Ma'am Minggita, the correct answer po. The most important factor in a successful eye banking program to encourage people to donate is... An active corneal retrieval program in the hospital. <laughs> that is the most important. As I said in the lecture, you can have all the media and all the PR that you can have, but at the time of death, you can't expect the relative to remember. Somebody has to ask. Diba? Some, if nobody asks, then you will, lose, you will lose the chance. And you have to have... And then to help them remember, also you have to have all the visuals, posters, etc., in strategic locations in the hospital. Uh, so it's letter uh, active corneal retrieval program. Okay, letter mm -hmm. C. Yes, thank you so much. 57% of those who responded uh, chose letter C, active corneal retrieval program. Uh, meron din po dito, 22% is public relations and media and then 14% funding and then 7% po sa ating availability of the eye surgeon. So yun po, those are uh, the answers to our two questions uh, for today. Uh, will can we have our panel evaluation poll po be flash onto the screen? Uh, the other question po no, uh, not the fun quiz, but yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so for those who are in the Zoom, you'll be able to see this uh, uh, 
panel evaluation poll po natin. So maraming maraming salamat po. Again, thank you so much sa ating mga ophthalmologists, Ma'am Minggita, uh, Dr. Pius, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Uh, please take the time as I read through the panel evaluation poll to think of your parting words to our viewers uh, kung ano po yung what you would want uh, the audience to take away from the webinar as I read through the list po na meron po tayo dito. So for number one, the panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. Do you strongly agree? Agree, disagree, or strongly disagree? Number two, panelists were well prepared and organized. Number three, the panelists spoke clearly and audibly. Number four, the panelists used appropriate language with technical medical jargons adequately explained. And finally, the panelists contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing various key health issues. We will not be closing the panel discussion poll until the end of our webinar as we move on to the parting words from our speakers. Go ahead, Mamangge. Yeah, thank you. And uh, despite us having a very brief uh, eye-opening um, messages for this uh, webinar, we'd like to ask uh, your closing remarks, Ma'am uh, Mingita and Dr. Uh, Pius, what do we want to tell our audience uh, for uh, to be able to our, as our take-home message about eye banking? Go ahead. Pius, you want to say Pius? Ikaw na muna. Uh, okay, ah, first, so si Pius muna. Go. <laughs> parting word first for for us cornea specialists. No, uh, we are the ones uh, who know. Kung sino yung mga may kailangan tayong mga cornea specialists. No, we we get our corneas from the eye bank. So I think we should all be active as cornea specialists in giving back to the eye bank. Dapat tayo mismo active mag, uh, mag to look for ways para makapa mabawasan yung mga backlog natin. No? That's for the cornea specialists. Now, for everybody else, no, uh, there are two things that's uh, no, no, that will never change the buhay natin. Death, uh, I mean, death and taxes. We will all die. No? We want to leave legacy. So one, one way of leaving a legacy is to be a donor. So I think that's all. Thank you, Dr. Pius. And our final words from Dr. Milita Badilla. Ma? Well, aside from what Pius said, agree ako dyan sa lahat. No? But, you know, everyone, all, each of us, every one of us can be heroes in other people's eyes. We can be a hero in other people's eyes by just donating our corneas. It doesn't take anything from you. Nothing, we will not lose anything. Uh, we don't need them in heaven. No? We need them here. And a lot of people need them. So please consider uh, your, signing a donor card, Donating your loved ones' corneas when they pass away, no. Uh, I think I already said so much about it, no. And um, help us help others. See, cornea blindness is something that you don't think about until it happens to you. It's the fifth uh, most common cause of disability and blindness in the Philippines and in the world. It can happen to anyone. It can happen to you tomorrow, no. And sometimes you don't think about it. And often nobody thinks about it. People don't think about it until it happens. So please um, help the iBank to help those in need. And again, everyone can be a hero in other people's eyes. It's easy. Be a donor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nilita. That is a very inspiring message. And now, Raymond, we will share our panel discussion, evaluation. <laughs> Sakit naman yan. Baka... And we have the panel evaluation, Paul, po muna before we go into our synthesis and closing remarks. Um, okay, so, so far, tuloy-tuloy lang po yung mga sumasagot po natin. No? At least 94%, matas po, at least 94% of our respondents indicated that strongly agree with each of the statements. So that's a testament both to the webinar topic and the quality of uh, experts that we have had. So maraming maraming salamat po again to Dr. Mingita Padilla and Dr. Pius Acampo for talking about this uh, transformative powers po with regards to eye banking and corneal transplantation. For our synthesis and closing remarks, uh, speaker that will be introduced by Dr. Aguilar. Okay, so I will introduce my boss who got me here, Dr. <laughs> Stella Marie Jose. She is our head of the Office of the Expanded Education and Training of the UPPGH, who will give our synthesis and closing remarks. Ma'am, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We had another excellent lecture from Dr. Mindita Padilla and Dr. Pius Ocampo. Uh, what is the status of eye banking and corneal uh, transplantation in the Philippines? You know, I want to 
uh, review what she said because it can affect any of us. So the causes are damage to the cornea. It can be fungal infection after a traumatic incident, recurrent herpes, bacterial infection, trauma, and improper contact lens use. You know, you can see that in some patients. Congenital uh, corneal opacity, chemical burns, corneal perforation, scar from measles and keratitis, post-cataract edema, and keratoconus. So these are the causes of uh, corneal injury. Now, uh, landmark law in July 1995 was the Republic Act 7885, which is an act to promote corneal transplantation in the country. So uh, it's already a law. Okay? So um, it's, uh, it's a good thing that it was promulgated. Okay? So uh, when uh, upon discussion, uh, we transplantation in the country uh, about transplantation in the country. Uh, do the recipients know the identity of the donor? So donations are anonymous, no? so they do not know the who the donor is. But some come out in the open, and uh, like the family, they feel comforted when uh, because at least they have helped somebody to be able to see. You no, know? so uh, that's a good thing for us. All right, Mom Stella. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, I was. Uh, so um, but then COVID came along and uh, everything was a standstill. So during the post pandemic times, uh, according to Mindita, the I banking was in crisis. So there was hardly any donation. But at present, if I may say so myself, I think it, that the status of I banking is hopeful because now the numbers are again going up. So in her, her summary, in her summary, Mindita said, how can you help the IBAC? First, you encourage your own uh, relatives to become I don't, corneal donors. And also you encourage your hospital to put up a corneal retrieval program of their own. And you should have an advocacy campaign in communities and organizations for, organ, uh, for uh, corneal donation. And of course, can donate to the Ice Bank of the Philippines. Now we have a very young consultant, Dr. Pius Ocampo, uh, also a graduate of the PGH Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences, and now he heads. Uh, he is the head of uh, uh, the ophthalmology uh, department in Paulino J. Garcia Memorial Research and Medical Center in Cabanatu and Nueva Ecija. And he gave four points for us to improve our, our corneal donation. He said commitment of the consultants. Number two, the involvement of the residents. So they get donors from the IM department, the, the internal medicine residents, the surgery residents, and the ER residents. And you should have a transplant coordinator in your hospital. And of course, information um, dissemination on I um on corneal uh, donation. You know, I checked after the talk of Mingita, I checked my license and it was written there that not not to donate. And I will change that. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Mom Stella. <laughs> uh, next week we will be featuring a video. Tama Raymond. Next week po we will uh, hopefully we'll have um the the Department of Health uh, under secretary uh so Oka Dumama po and our health programs in the Bangsamoro uh um autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao po so hopefully we'll be able to get the confirmation and uh we look forward to your participation again everyone uh for that uh, webinar uh in the meantime for this for ju not just for this webinar but for all of your, our previous webinars you can still watch us on the playback at the TVUP YouTube channel and the TVUP Signal TV channel 101 and uh we we thank uh, Ma'am Stella for capturing po yung essence po ng ating webinar and next week uh hope makita-kita po tayo and before we conclude our program all stop covid deaths webinars are archived for viewing at the TVUP YouTube channel. So you just either you open your YouTube app or you go to your web browser, type in youtube.com forward slash TVUPPH 
for you to be able to see all 162 after today, 163 webinars that we have had today. Also, we know that you are, everyone, very, very busy po. So we have selected uh, and made short presentations po that we call SED Shorts. Uh, so you can watch them at your convenience also at the YouTube channel of TVUP. So this formally closes po our webinar for this week. Makita po tayo again next Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. It's a date. Thank you. Together we can stop COVID deaths. Uh, and keep safe, keep healthy, and see you online.